Okay, so here we are. Um, what is it? Wednesday the 17th. And now we're going to continue on with uh, our limits stuff and look at limits at infinity and um, classify all the discontinuities in n chapter 2. So let's uh, let's start with uh, let's start with a little picture here. Let's consider uh, let's consider the function f of x equals x minus one over x squared minus x. Now note that at one the function is undefined. And so, so we might want to consider, let's just, looking back here, let's look at the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 over x squared minus x. That gives us 0 over 0, which is bad, undefined, indeterminate. And so if we factor um, on the bottom here, we get this. And... Um, And these cancel, and then we get, and we get, so this is the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x, and that's 1. Okay, so in this first, in this first case, I'm going to call this case 1, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x exists. In fact, uh, the limit equals 1. But f of 1 does not exist. And that says there's a hole at 1, 1. Or, to use calc terms, a removable discontinuity. One, one, and that's so that's how you define a removable discontinuity. If the limit exists, the two sided limit exists, but the function doesn't exist there, you get a hole. And it looks like this, right? It goes here, zero, here, and that's it at one, comma, one. Okay, so now let's now we want to talk about what does this thing do as x gets really, really, really big in the positive infinity direction. So to that end, let's graph. Let's graph the function um, let's graph oops x squared minus x and if you graph this you graph the function 1 over x but there is a hole at 1 1 okay so when we graph this thing we put the axes down um, there's x and y and this is um, this is a standard shape. It's a hyperbola. The function one over x has a, it's a hyperbola. And um, for our example, at one comma one, at one comma one, there's a hole. There's a hole. Okay. So now instead of letting the limit approach one, we've already dealt with that limit. We want to say if I if I take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, this is the limit as x goes to infinity of one over x. And if you have one over a massive, massive number, you get zero. And if you see if you look at this graph, as this x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this thing has a what? A horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity of f of x, um, you get this guy. 1 over x, sorry. And one over a huge negative number is is still zero. And so if you're going this way, as you go to uh, minus infinity, f of x goes to zero. And so 
Now we, we just use this as a fact, and this is a key for the rest of the four course. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x equals 0, and that's plus or minus infinity. And in fact, the better one to remember and use, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the n equals 0 for any n greater than 0, even a fraction. And so this is, this is one of your toolbox. This is your screwdriver for taking limits. You use this over and over and over again. 1 over x to the n for n positive. If you take the limit as x goes to infinity, you always get 0. So for example, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of x, that's 0. That's just x to the 1 half. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over the cube root of x, that's equal to 0. That's just x to the 1 third. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the fifth, that 0 it goes there really fast. Okay. Okay, so we got that now. And, um, and this is a definition. If the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals some number, not infinity, and the, in the case above it was 0, it could be 1, 3, minus 5. So if, f, if the limit exists and it's a number as x goes to infinity, then f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals l. Okay. And we dealt with these, uh, we deal with these with rational functions in the past and uh, tomorrow night's co-rack night is all about rational functions. So we'll talk about this some more. Okay. And this is also true if x goes to minus infinity, so plus or minus infinity. All right, so now let's go back to our picture here. And let's, let's see. So what happens, what happens as x approaches 0 from the right? f of x blows up, doesn't it? So in this example, if you take the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, of f of x, you get infinity because this thing blows up, right? As, as, as x gets closer and closer to 0, f of x blows up. So if you have 1 over 1 1 millionth, so 1 over a really huge, huge, uh, sorry, a small, 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 small fraction, you get a huge number, right? So, so 1 over 1 millionth is a million. I think I got all those zeros right. Yep. Okay. And similarly, similar, similarly, as x approaches 0 from the left, f of x equals minus infinity. All right, so this thing comes, comes crashing down here like this, it's minus infinity. So this gives us vertical asymptotes and a definition for that. So definition, if the limit as x approaches some number a of f of x equals plus or minus infinity, then x equals a is a vertical asymptote. Now, these are all very formal definitions. Finding vertical asymptotes is a lot easier to do algebraically than by doing the limits. Because basically to get the limit, you do the algebra first and then you go, oh, that's the limit. So it's sort of circular. Okay, so now we have um, this idea of a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. And um, 
tomorrow night we'll talk about a slant asymptote, but that's something different. Okay. And so now we can now we can classify classify all discontinuities. So one, if the limit as x approaches c of a function f, if this equals some number l, not infinity, but f of c does not exist, then we have a hole which we call a removable discontinuity. Okay. Okay, two. If the limit as x approaches c of f of x, if this thing equals plus or minus infinity, then f of x has a vertical asymptote at the vertical line x equals c. And thirdly, this is just to be complete, if the left-hand limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l and the right-hand limit as x approaches c of f of x equals m and l is not equal to m, but they're defined, they're, neither one of them are infinity, so if we have the left-hand limit existing and the right-hand limit existing, but they're not equal, then uh, f of x has a jump discontinuity at x equals c. And um, just to be, because I've given examples of the other two, my favorite example for this course is um, what's the limit as x approaches 0 of absolute value of x over x from the right? That's equal to 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 of root x over x from the left is minus 1. So here's L in the, in the notation. Here's M, and 1 is not equal to minus 1. Um, so we have a jump discontinuity, and it looks like this. And it goes like this. Right, so, so, so the right-hand limit is one, and the left-hand limit is minus one, so you, have, so you have a jump here on the function. And you can't close it up like you can a removal discontinuity. Okay, so that's, that's, that's sort of the, um, that's the theory behind it. And again, it's all, the devil's always in the details and the algebra and the, and the stuff that's so easy to forget. Um, so let's just do let's just do some fun examples here. Um, so let's look at let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of the sine of one over x. Well, all the limits. So two videos ago, I defined all the limit laws um, for x going to some number c, and just because you throw an infinity in there doesn't change anything. All those limit laws still exist. So whenever you have the limit of a continuous function, you can slide the limit inside the argument. So this becomes the sign of the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. Right? So you can just 
slide it right inside the continuous function. And now from before, we showed that, uh, that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0. So that's the sine of 0, and that limit is 0. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the limit as x approaches 0, um, sorry, as x approaches infinity of e to the 1 over x, so now it's the, this is the my favorite function, e to the one over x. So it's just it's just now you slide you slide the limit inside the argument here. All right. So I just took this whole limit here and slid it up here. And as we said a second ago, that limit is zero, and this is e to the zero, and that's one. Okay, let's look for some, let's, uh, let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed minus 2 over x cubed plus 1. All right, well, this isn't quite what we want. Um, there's a few ways to do this. If you... Um, if you read the book or if you go on the internet sometimes, they'll make this much, much harder than it needs to be. Because you can do long division, divide bottom into top, rewrite it and do it that way. Or you can just be clever. So what you do is you take, pick the highest, you find the highest power. In fact, let me do this. Let me make this a 2x squared and I'll make this x. So you pick the highest power in, in the fraction, or in the rational expression, I should say. And in this case, it's x cubed. And so you divide bottom and top by x cubed, and that's just like multiplying by. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over x cubed times 1 over x cubed. That doesn't change anything. So what you get is the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed over x cubed minus 2x squared over x cubed over x cubed over x cubed plus x over x cubed. Right. See what I did there? I divided through by, I should have done it in red. I multiplied through by 1 over x cubed on the top and 1 over x cubed on the bottom. So this is all legal maneuvers. I haven't changed anything. Just done an algebraic massage. Okay. Now x cubed over x cubed is 1. 2x squared over x cubed is 2 over x. And then I have 1 plus 1 over x squared. Okay. And now you slide the limit inside there, and you have 1 minus the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x over 1 minus the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x squared. And as we said before, those two limits are 0. So you get 1 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, and that limit is 1. And so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. We'll graph this. We'll graph this tomorrow night um, in a in our co-rec, but when we do graph this thing, it does have it does have a horizontal asymptote at one. So whatever's going on in infinity and minus infinity, the function settles down to one. And um, we'll clean that up tomorrow night. So. All right, uh, that's all I have. Um, it'd be nice if you did a couple of these for homework from the homework set. There's only six of them, uh, seven, and um, just to get your hands around this stuff before tomorrow, because tomorrow we start chapter three, which I'm super excited about. And um, it's really sort of chapter three is the well, chapter three and four, 
Three is the bulk of the course. I think it takes five weeks to get through all of the chapter, maybe even six. So, all right, I will see you in one minute. Hold on, hold on. I need to give you a guided practice. That's the one thing I don't have in my notes here. Darn it. Let's see, is there something I didn't do here? I'll give you two. What's the limit as x goes to infinity of the cosine of 1 over x? And then what's the limit as x goes to the infinity of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1? And those are your two guided practice problems. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay. <laughs>